Hey everybody, welcome back to The Dude's Kitchen, and if it's your first time here, please remember to subscribe and ring that bell for video notifications. In this episode, we are doing a reverse seared steak. It's by viewer request. I'm going to show you how I do a reverse seared steak. I like to do mine on a pellet grill, and then finish it off on the Weber kettle. Before we get to that though, please excuse the mess in the back. The Dude's Kitchen is going through a major remodel and I don't think you're going to be able to even recognize the place when we're done. Alright, let's start on the reverse seared steak. We start with our ribeyes and I have three ribeyes here and they've got great marbling in it. I am just using for this salt, pepper and garlic or SPNG. It's the most basic of rubs. Put it on your steak but not a lot. The reason why is you don't want to overpower that steak. Now these steaks have been sitting out for about an hour. They're not room temperature, but I can tell you they are a little bit warmer than when they came out of the fridge. All right, that is perfect on those. And it's just that simple, salt, pepper, garlic. It is the most simplest of, of seasoning you can use. You can use Uncle Steve's. He's got a great line of shakes you can use. But if you don't, just go with salt, pepper, garlic. All right, let's throw these on the pellet grill. first steak down, put the second one in there, and the third of course. Now I want these steaks to come in at an about 110, so what I'm going to do is just put a probe in there. I already have the temperature set on my probe reader at 110, so as soon as these things hit the mark, we're going to take them off. We're going to marinate our steak in onions, mushrooms, and garlic. So we're just going to start with the onion first. I'm just using a yellow onion, cutting it up. That is perfect. Put a little EVOO on it, and now we're going to put these onto the Weber kettle. Our coals are ready, so I'm going to use what's called a vortex for this one. It's just basically this metal, piece of metal here. We're going to dump our coals in, put that over, and put that over, and we're going to wait for it to come up to about 400 degrees. The Weber kettle just hit that magic 400 mark. I'm going to just kind of give the onions one more quick stir. Add a little SPNG to them as well. Let these things cook down before we add the garlic and the mushrooms. We're going to give our onions a quick stir. Won't take very long with, with these, especially since they're sitting over that vortex. Onions have been on for about 10 minutes. Looking good. I'm going to add a little more EVOO to it. I'm going to add some mushrooms as well. Now I'm just using the pre-sliced mushrooms already. These shouldn't take very long at all to cook. I'm going to cap it back up for a few minutes. We're sitting at about three minutes. Give these a stir. All right, we'll check it out in a few more minutes. All right, another two minutes down. Yeah, I'm going to add the equivalent of a couple of cloves of garlic to this. And the reason why I'm adding the garlic on it at the end is I don't want it to burn. Stir it all up in there. All right, let's just let it cook. You can smell that garlic. Oh, it's so good. Well, that's cooking away. I'm going to put another pan in there. The other pan is where we're going to put our mushrooms, onion, and garlic into so we can sear our steak on this pan. That's about good enough. Just put them into this pan. You notice it's off to the side because I just want to keep this warm for a bit. 
at this point we're just waiting for our steaks to finish. This steak is done. I mean, just look at this. This is so tender, right? We're going to put it into the pan that's on the Weber kettle that we seared our onions, mushrooms, and garlic in. And this is what you call the reverse sear. Let's do it. All right, first one down. You got to really keep an eye on it. Don't let it burn. These things are super hot. Man, look at that. Give it another flip. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, baby. I think at this point it's cold enough to be done. Look at that steak. Yeah. Let's put the other ones on. You can see the coloring out on this again. Look how better this thing is. Seriously, it's so good. Let's put our last one down. This one's a little thicker, so we've got to really watch this one. But man, it's getting that brown on there, the sear mark. Woo. Heck yeah. Like I said, because this one is thicker, I'm going to give it a little bit more time on here. Because really what I'm looking for is to take that steak that was at 110 and bump it up to about 130. And I don't think it's quite ready. I don't like to burn either. Right there in the middle. I mean, that would be looking straight right there in the middle still in the tongue. It's starting to harden up a little bit. All right, I think that's close enough to get the work because this thing is going to continue to cook for a couple minutes. Let's remove it. Well, all three of these have rested about 10 minutes. And uh, I, just look at this. This just fall apart. I just want to try a bite. Dang. Absolutely amazing. I'm going to take some of our mushrooms, onions, and garlic that we put on there. It's totally what I'm talking about right there. Now, it's time to give it a taste. That's a big bite. Full of flavor though. Wow. I gotta try it with a beer. That's got tons of flavor. Seriously, I may never go back to doing steak any other way. And the onions and mushrooms and garlic. On top of the SPNG that we put on this, the bomb. And that steak. Starting it out on a pellet grill and then searing it once it hits 110 on the Weber kettle. Amazing. It's not chewy at all. I mean, this steak is just perfect. Perfect in texture and taste, everything. Tell me how you do your reverse sear or just tell me how you do your steak. Have you ever done it on a pellet grill and then moved over to a Weber kettle to, to reverse sear it? I'd be really curious to know, guys, because I just want to know, because there's got to be so many different ways of doing this. Just curious to see how you guys do it. Alright, the recipe's down below. Please remember to like, subscribe, comment, ring that bell for notifications. I'd love to see Patrick from Patty Joe Cooking do one of these. I bet he could. I bet he'd rock it. Alright guys, we'll talk to you later. You're watching The Dude's Kitchen. 
See you next time. That's for you, Patrick.